Well, good morning, church, and welcome to this week's Take 5. If you're looking for the special surprise that Pastor Corky mentioned last week, well, guess what? I think I'm it. I'm not sure how special it is, but a surprise nonetheless. Anyway, I'm super excited to be able to share some reflections with you for this week's Take 5. And as you know, we've been working our way through the 2021 devotional, The Best of the Prophets. And this week, we're going to be taking a look at some challenging words of God as spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Now, I don't know about you, but oftentimes when I read through scriptures, I find myself intentionally seeking out those scripture passages which speak words of hope and inspiration and encouragement. And then I can claim those verses for myself, thinking this must be what God wants to personally speak to me right now. Then sometimes when I come across those passages where God is speaking a word of warning or rebuke to his people, I can tend to just skim right over those or push them aside, because after all, they probably don't apply to me, right? Well, God tells us in his his word that all scripture is God-breathed, and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, and correcting, so that the servants of God can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So church, whether you're reading a passage of scripture that's encouraging to you, or that's a word of rebuke, we must always examine our hearts and ask God how this specific scripture might personally apply to us. So let's go ahead and take a look at today's passage. It's Isaiah 29, 13. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. So let's admit it, when it comes to worship, we do have some traditions and some rituals that we do simply because we've been taught to do them. For example, we bow our heads when we pray. We stand when we sing. Some of us woohoo when we put our offering into the plate. Other examples of worship traditions could be singing the doxology or passing the peas or reciting the Lord's Prayer or the Apostles' Creed. And don't get me wrong, none of these traditions are bad or wrong. In fact, they can help us to reflect on God's goodness and His holiness, and they can help us take on a more reverent posture during worship as well. But do they always reflect the authenticity of our heart? Or are we simply going through the motions because it's what we've been taught to do? You see, this is what Isaiah is addressing in this passage. The book of Isaiah records the prophet proclaiming the impending judgment of God upon his people through the destruction of Jerusalem, the very heart or center of their ritual and of their worships. And this judgment came about because of their rebelliousness, which included, as indicated in this passage, their abandonment of true worship. You see, Isaiah points to the very heart of the problem, the very source of the problem. They were going through the right religious motions but their hearts were far from God. Let's take a look back at the very first worshipers recorded in the book of Genesis, Cain and Abel. If you remember, Cain was the very first person recorded to bring an offering to God, and yet his offering was unacceptable. His brother Abel, on the other hand, brought an acceptable offering. So what exactly was it that made Cain's offering unacceptable in God's eyes and Abel's pleasing? You see, it wasn't so much the difference in the offering itself, a plant offering which Cain brought versus an animal offering which Abel brought, but it was the thoughtlessness and the carelessness behind Cain's offering and the intentionality and the generosity behind Abel's. You see, Abel brought his very best. God looks not so much at the act of worship itself, but at the heart of the worshiper. See, God looks at the motivations and the attitude of the heart behind the act of worship. You see, church, it's not our acts of worship themselves that make us right with God, but whether it's the attitude of our heart that makes us right with God. You see, true worship begins the same way that Isaiah's message to God's people began. Admit and acknowledge that you're a sinner, that you have forsaken God as your first love that you have gone through the acts of worship, but that your heart is far from God. Then repent. Ask God's forgiveness and the Holy Spirit's guidance in turning you away from sin. Then come before God with a humble heart, desiring to bring true adoration and praise and thanksgiving for the indescribable gift of salvation in Christ Jesus. For church, a broken and contrite heart 
God will not despise. Thanks so much, church, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday.